my channel if you are a returning subscriber thank you so much for returning back here to watch my videos god bless you please before you leave remember to subscribe and when you subscribe click on that notification bell you will find it down there so that you'll be the first one to be notified whenever i upload a new video i promise you you will always enjoy every content that i upload so dear friends just like i promised you in my last post here on youtube that i'm going to be sharing with you this very dramatic online dating love story of a tanzanian lady who found love on online dating apps with a spanish guy then they agreed that the lady will go to spain just to see his life but after arriving in spain things changed this guy told the lady you cannot return to tanzania you have to ask for an asylum and become like a refugee guys what happened after is gonna shock you so so much but guys before i jump into this story i have to talk two things <laughs> you guys be like learn to be short you talk too much <laughs> but whatever i talk about guys be very very attentive because it's very important and it's gonna help you so so much so number one thing that i want to talk about before i start this story is that if you are on online dating apps searching for love be very very careful finding a guy on online dating apps especially you who are interested in interracial dating it isn't all it shouldn't be just a man no guys should be a right man a man that you ever dream of that man should have all things that you are looking for in a man when you chat with a guy don't be in a hurry take your time to know this guy very very well because you can't marry or you can't just go and start living with someone that you don't know very well that will be very very wrong guys so even if a guy is in a hurry tell him that you want to take your time if he loves you he's gonna respect that please please the second thing actually it is a request please please take it easy on this girl because what she's going through right now it's very very hard it's a very complicated situation so you insulting her or judging her won't help at all she didn't have any experience on online dating apps and didn't know what could happen with that guy that she found on online dating apps plus she's very very young guys 24 years of age so at that time you can even be manipulated i am here to tell you no matter you are young don't accept to be manipulated you should be strong you should be smart you should be intelligent you should stand on your grounds Not to say no if you don't want to do it i am here to tell you a story like this to help you guys so that you don't find yourself in a situation that this lady found herself in because she came to know about my youtube channel when it was too too late so let's jump into this story right now so dear friends the name of the lady in our today's video is Catherine, 24 years of age and tanzanian guys we need to know Catherine's life background before she found love on online dating apps so that we can connect with her and understand her story very very well so friends Catherine's story starts when she was very little lost her both parents may their souls keep resting in peace so after losing the parents Catherine's aunt the sister to the mother took Catherine Catherine tells us that aunt was the one who had very good life in the whole family so everyone was looking at her you know our extended families in africa when someone is rich in the family all eyes on that person <laughs> used to say that she has winged life in swahili they say amewini maisha and that is why she was given catherine to take care of her because she could get good life with that aunt also something else you need to know is that Catherine was born alone on her mother's side but the dad had another son before Catherine was born but Catherine has never met that brother 
So the aunt took her and started living with the aunt. Everything was fine. She started primary school, then finished class seven. After finishing class seven, went to O level. Started till form four, and when she was in form four, that is when her love story begins. So guys, Catherine tells us at form four, met this cute, smart chaga guy who used to give her lots of attention and afterwards they decided to start dating. That was the first love. <laughs> Everything was good. They were so in love with each other. This guy was two classes ahead of Catherine. So they continued their relationship. Everything was really good. They could even talk of future plans that we are going to study. And after studies, we will get married, start a family together. So studies continued. She finished from four and after from four, went for from five and six. But the guy went to the university, but the relationship continued. So friends, Catherine tells us when this guy went to the university, he started changing, started showing character development. <laughs> Catherine could call this guy, could send him messages, but it could be excuses. I am very busy every time I have exams. But because Catherine was so in love with this guy, kept on pushing herself to this guy. And the truth is, this guy had started already to date university girls. So guys, life continued and Catherine finished from six. After finishing from six, waited for the results. But when they came back, she failed from six didn't have enough passes to go to the university. Catherine tells us after knowing that she failed from six, it really destroyed her psychologically, felt like she had lost focus in life. But guys, her relationship continued. And what Catherine decided to do with her studies, she was like, I am done with studying, going to college or university. No, what I'm going to do, I am going to take a hotel management Course. So she went and took hotel management course, everything was fine, and after finishing her course, got a job in one of the tourist hotels in Tanzania, Masaki Dar es Salaam. So guys, Catherine started working and continued pushing herself to this Chaga guy. Tells us that one was true, true love, cause that guy never even like shower her with gifts or gave her money, nothing. <laughs> she still loved this guy. So sometimes could go to this guy's house in Europe here, we could say apartment, because actually in Tanzania, when you rent, it doesn't mean that you have to rent the whole house. You can rent even a single room or two rooms or one room with a bathroom like that. So we call it a house. <laughs> but if I could say it in Swahili, we call it ghetto. <laughs> So Catherine could go to this guy's ghetto to help him around, like wash his clothes, iron them, clean the house, you know, to show the guy that I am a wife material. This is the thing with Tanzanian women. I don't know other African countries, but if you're dating a guy and you want to show this guy that, you know, I am a wife material, I am a girl to marry, you have to help the guy around, you cook for him. <laughs> all house chores <laughs> so Catherine used to do that so tells us one time went to this guy's ghetto and then found clothes for women including underwears she got so angry and was like I am going to wash all of them hang them out there so that he can see that I found out about his games <laughs> so when this guy returned and found out that Catherine had washed including the clothes of his girlfriend friends that comes to visit him he was like you know those clothes are the clothes of my friends girlfriends <laughs> i told you tanzanian men can lie they can lie to you till you believe them <laughs> i know right now you're like catherine leave this guy <laughs> Catherine did not leave the guy, kept on giving the goodies, and the guy did not refuse the goodies. No, no. <laughs> he kept on taking the goodies. <laughs> this 
is another problem with Tanzanian men. Not all guys, but majority. He knows he will never marry you. He doesn't want anything serious with you. But still, if you give the goodies, he's gonna take those goodies. <laughs> And for us ladies, when you give your goodies, you are like, oh yes, this is going to be my husband. He loves me. That is why he's taking the goodies. But that is not how it is. A guy takes the goodies because you're making it comfortable for him to take the goodies. If you say no, he will never insist like give me the goodies because he knows he will get goodies from other ladies. So Catherine continued to be stupidly in love. A total mumu. <laughs> <laughs> so guys one thing i have learned in dating due to my own experience you can love a guy very very much you can be so stupidly in love with a guy but trust me it's gonna reach the limit that day will come and you'll say this is it i am done 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 i am not going to look back again so what happened Catherine went to this guy's ghetto house and found the guy in bed naked with another woman enjoying the goodies <laughs> Catherine was very very disappointed she was so heartbroken closed the door and left tells us that was the limit that is the day she said it's over i don't need this guy anymore and it ended like that guys so friends after that relationship with the chunky guy ended Catherine tells us when she was like 10 years of age used to say that when i grow up i'm going to get married to a white man i am going to live in europe even used to enjoy watching european movies the telenovelas told me about the telenovela called mara clara <laughs> used to like that so so much bella when i could watch those telenovelas I could go crazy and my desires to get married to a white man when I grow up could increase. You know what they always show in the movies, in those telenovelas, good good life. <laughs> <laughs> so you start imagining fancy things, living in Europe happily, you know, with a man who truly loves you, <laughs> such kind of stuff. So when that relationship ended with a Tanzanian guy, reminded her of her childhood dream of getting married to a white man and go live in Europe. But Catherine tells us, yes, she was working in a tourist hotel, but couldn't talk to white men who could come to the hotel because her doing so was going to lose her job she wasn't allowed at all that made her to keep on with her job busy not minding at all those white men but at work also had a girlfriend who really liked dating white men so one day when they were talking with this friend that is when a friend told her about dating apps and was like i am on online dating apps searching for a white man so if you are interested too you can try your luck so guys like you know how i do my videos i'm gonna be sharing with you the name of the dating app before I end this video. So friends, Catherine was so, so happy about knowing the dating apps. You know the excitement you get when you get to know about dating apps. <laughs> you feel like you are going to find the one soon. So that is the excitement that Catherine had when she joined online dating apps, but tells us it wasn't easy at all. Faced lots, lots of challenges. Challenge number one, met lots of people with fake profiles, met scammers, and the biggest, biggest challenge, met those white guys who wanted to come to Tanzania for vacation, but wanted company, wanted women who will accompany them and enjoy life, enjoy the goodies. <laughs> <laughs> that one really made her feel like giving up but never gave up kept on searching and because she was still heartbroken by that Tanzanian guy told herself you know what I'm gonna take this chance and start enjoying life with these white men who comes to Tanzania to enjoy life for vacation nothing serious and guys I've talked about these white men who go to Africa 
to enjoy the African goodies <laughs> on their vacation. So Catherine tells us could chat with the guy online and then agree that she will accompany him everywhere that he goes. So she could go with these guys to Zanzibar, stay with them on their vacation and when they return everything is over then start all over again that was her lifestyle i know you guys are going to be surprised by catherine living that lifestyle but trust me most ladies do that i've been chatting to lots of ladies on instagram who goes to zanzibar with these white guys or mombasa or safari and then when they finish everything finish but another thing that is so sad sometimes these white guys they don't tell you that they just want enjoyment no they pretend to be in a relationship with you and then come take your goodies when the vacation is over they tell you it didn't work they never felt that chemistry they thought they could feel <laughs> Oh my god we should be very very careful about this so Catherine's lifestyle continued like that till January 2021 when she decided I am done with this kind of lifestyle I'm not going to do it anymore right now I have to be serious and search for a serious man because I really want a white man to marry me and take me to Europe so became very serious and tells us june 2021 received a message from a spanish guy this guy's message was hi so guys she responded to his hi oh, sorry guys <laughs> i have to take some coffee time for coffee welcome guys <laughs> okay now let's continue so she responded to his hi by saying hi too and they started communicating so i want to give you a little background about this spanish guy his name is diego so guys the truth is at the time diego was sending a message to catherine he was in tanzania already for his one month vacation and had spent two weeks in Tanzania. So Catherine tells us that Diego told him it was not his plan to go to Tanzania for vacation, wanted to go to another African country, but because there was lockdown, most African countries, the borders were closed, it's only Tanzania that was open, he came to Tanzania. So they chatted a bit and then Diego was inviting Catherine to his hotel where he is staying. It was like, if you are free, come to my hotel. So when Catherine heard about that, I was like, what? He's calling me to the hotel. This must be same, same guys that want enjoyment. So she was like, I am very busy. I am at work. I cannot come. But the truth is Catherine was just at home wasn't at work so it ended like that then the second day when she went to that dating app found diego's message asking her what's your real name because most people here on the dating app use a nickname where do you live whom do you live with where you work asked lots lots of personal questions when catherine saw that was like hmm, this guy is so insisting maybe he is serious due to his questions so they kept on chatting and catherine tells us chatted for a week with diego and then they had to sit for their first meeting so diego again invited catherine to his hotel Catherine went to meet him when she arrived at the hotel, found Diego's friend, he was white, with his girlfriend. So they were full, they talked a bit and decided to go for dinner. Those us, they went for dinner in one of the restaurants at Masaki. After dinner, they went to Samak Samaki to enjoy. <laughs> Because at Samak Samaki, you can have drinks, you can even eat, but it's a place where there is music. If you want some good music, dance, enjoy yourself, you go to Samak Samaki. So they went to enjoy the music and have some more drinks. So at Samak Samaki, they talked, though not that much, and after that, they returned to the hotel. So for me, if I was in Catherine's shoes, I couldn't have returned to the hotel cause that was the first day. How can you go to his hotel? <laughs> but she went guys, she returned to the hotel with him and after arriving to the hotel, Diego called the mother 
started talking to the mother and then gave the phone to Catherine so that she can greet the mother. Catherine talked to the mother, tells us they did not talk so much. She was in a shock because that was too fast. But to add on that, Diego had sent Catherine's photo to the mother. All this seemed very, very strange into the eyes of Catherine. So after talking to Diego's mother, Diego asked Catherine, have you ever traveled to Europe? Catherine was like, no. Do you have a passport? She said, no. Diego was like, okay, good. The conversation ended there. So into Catherine's head, she started creating castles in the air. You know, she has talked to the man. Then the guy is talking about going to Europe, talking about the passport. She was like, hmm. This guy must be the one. He is talking of serious things. So that night she gave her goodies. <laughs> Cause the guy seemed serious. So in the morning she had to go to work and what happened, she could go to work, then return to the hotel, stay with Diego. But every day Diego could tell her before she leaves, take your belongings don't leave them here she didn't know why diego could tell her that ignored it and continued with their relationship because at the time diego met catherine had remained two weeks before he returns to spain so time went so fast and then it was time for diego to return to spain but before he left gave Catherine money to apply for her passport. Told her apply for the passport because I want to invite you to Spain so that you can see my life. If you like it there, if everything is good between us, then we will continue with our relationship. So gave her money, told her if it is not enough, you will let me know and left for Spain. So Catherine applied for her passport, continued life, tells us Diego could spoil her so, so much, could send her money every month. If she could get sick, Diego could send her money for the hospital, could also pay for her rent. Tells us her life was good, 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 was so happy, enjoying life, compared the other Tanzanian guy who used not to give her anything. She was like, thank you God, I found a guy who takes care of me, a guy who really loves me. And Catherine tells us at that time, she was crazily, crazily in love with Diego. Diego could call her every single day, send messages, also gave her his mom's phone numbers and told her, please keep calling my mom to ask her how she is doing and Catherine could do so. Call the mother-in-law, talk to her how she's doing, but tells us this mother-in-law never called her to ask her how she is doing. Diego kept on pushing her, please call my mom, ask her how she is doing, you know, such kind of a thing. And Catherine continued to do so. So started the visa process and as she was waiting for her visa interview, Diego started telling her, you know what, I want you to come here and when you arrive here, you are going to apply for an asylum be like a refugee because going through the visa process all the time it takes lots of money but Catherine did not take that serious they laughed about it and she ignored it passed like that thought it was only a joke so the day for the visa interview came Catherine went for her visa interview she's so so lucky got her three months tourist visa to Spain wow <laughs> <laughs> Most of the times they give you only a month, but she was given three months. And after getting her visa, Diego told her, you shouldn't tell anyone where you are going. Make it a secret. People have got bad eyes. Even your family, do not tell them that you have a boyfriend. Just tell them you met a Spanish woman at work. This Spanish woman likes you and decided to adapt you as her child take you to Spain. That's it. So Catherine tells us most of us African people, we believe in witchcraft. So Diego telling her not to tell anyone because of bad eyes, it made a lot of sense to her and decided to make her trip a secret. So the day for Catherine to travel to Spain came and went to Spain, arrived at the airport, Diego was there empty handed. 
<laughs> Without flowers or anything, Catherine was so so surprised because she knew Diego loved her so much due to the way he was spoiling her, was taking care of her, so thought Diego was going to come with beautiful flowers at the airport to pick her, but it did not happen. So they hugged and went to Diego's house. So after arriving at Diego's house, tells us Diego's mother doesn't live far away from Diego. You just cross the road and go to Diego's mother. Very, very close <laughs> to each other. So the next day, Diego took Catherine for shopping, bought her lots of clothes, and cause it was in winter, she arrived in November 2021. So bought for her lots of winter clothes. Diego was treating Catherine very, very good the first days and even went to visit his family. So when they visited, there was this cousin of Diego who sat close to Catherine and asked Catherine, how do you see Diego's mother? Catherine was like, she's a very nice woman. Then the cousin told her, be careful. But because the cousin never spoke English, she had to translate on Google and show her on the phone be careful. Catherine did not understand why was this cousin telling her to be careful. For what? For who? <laughs> she ignored that. So now guys, to the most Afro cinema of this story. Remember, she was supposed to stay in Spain for three months. So when three months was almost, you know, approaching to end, Diego started bringing stories of asking for an asylum. Catherine was like, no, I'm not going to ask for an asylum. I am returning back home to Tanzania. Diego became so furious and started telling her, you don't love me, why do you want to return? Then the mother too started telling Catherine, why do you want to return to Tanzania? That means you don't love my son. They were so, so angry at her and they started fighting so, so much. So they could talk even in a very manipulative way. They told her, you don't have parents in Tanzania. You don't have a good job in Tanzania. All your life is shit. We took you from shit and brought you here to live a good life. Why do you want to return? If you return, people are gonna laugh at you. Who refuses to stay in Europe? You know, tell her bad, bad, bad things about her life. Also mention that they are doing her a favor. If you remember this phrase, there is a day I did a video and I was like, hey, if you're dating a guy, he's white, brings you to Europe to live with him, and then start telling you that I am doing you a favor, that is wrong, never accept that. Even if life in Africa is difficult, it is still home. Home is home, guys. So guys, the fights continued and Catherine kept on refusing to ask for an asylum. That is when it was when I got a message on Instagram from Catherine. So she introduced herself and then started telling me the whole story that the boyfriend and the mother are forcing her to ask for an asylum. And she was like, for me, I want to go back home. So when she told me this story, I'm telling you guys, my blood started boiling for anger. <laughs> I told Catherine, do not accept, don't apply for an asylum because you are going to be putting yourself in a trap. And to add on that, she told me they were to take her passport, stay there, I don't know, for one year till she gets the answers if they have accepted to give her an asylum or not. I was like, no, your passport is everything. Do not accept all this bullshit. Also told me the situation with the mother-in-law that they are using her like a house girl because she had to go at the mother-in-law's place, clean, do everything for this mother-in-law and then go to her house and Diego do everything. So it was becoming too much. She was really, really tired. Told me this mother-in-law is controlling the son on everything. There is no privacy. Even concerning our relationship, making decisions, the mother has to be the one to make the decisions. So what I told Catherine, I was like, concerning the mother-in-law, talk to this guy. If he really loves you, your thing is your thing. You are a couple, you should make decisions 
as the couple. The mother has got nothing to do with your relationship. I also talked again about the asylum I insisted, do not accept. If this guy really loves you, he should follow the legal way. Get married to you or leave you return to Tanzania, then come back get married. She was like, okay, Bella, I have understood you. Thank you so much. I will get back to you after talking to him. So the next day she wrote to me, we talked to Bella. Everything is fine now. I was so happy. I told her that's good. You have to stand on your grounds, have your voice. And I'm telling you, dear, beautiful ladies, always stand on your ground, have your voice, talk, no matter that guy has got a very big age gap between you, don't be scared. No matter that guy is white, don't be scared of his color. No matter he is rich, do not be scared of his wealth. Never. Talk. If you have to stand on your crowns, stand and talk. Defend yourself. Please, please. This is very, very important. So it ended like that, time passed. I never checked this girl again because I knew everything was going fine. <laughs> you know, I've got lots of people I talk to every day. I hope I am very, very busy. So this November, I received a message again from Catherine. Are you ready for Afro cinema? <laughs> it begins. So Catherine told me I wanted someone to talk to and that is why I have communicated to you. Things are not going well. Things are so, so bad on my side, on my relationship concerning my life. The other time, I'm sorry I lied to you. At the time I was chatting with you, it was too late. I had signed the papers for the asylum. Dear friends, to tell you the truth, I was really, really shocked. I told her, why did you do it? Bella, I had no choice. I had to do it. Cause at some point they made her life very, very impossible. The boyfriend told her, if you return to Tanzania, the relationship between you and me is over. So she got scared to lose this guy and the mother-in-law told her, you know what? We're going to take a good care of you. We are good people. You are going to have the best life here. So they kept on tormenting her till she agreed. I asked her, how did you get an asylum and Tanzania is not a country that we have war? What happened? What did you tell them? So it was like, Bella, these people had planned everything. So they told me to lie about my country, say that we don't have democracy, the leading party is so, so bad. You know, talk so badly about the government, say that I am not safe in my country. She got scared to say that and decided to change the story, say a different thing. But what she talked about, guys, will shock you. So Catherine had to go against her family and say that the uncle that grew her up, remember she grew up at her auntie's place, so the husband to the aunt used to sexually abuse her at the age of 10. Can you imagine guys? And also said that her aunt used to sell young ladies, sell them as prostitutes, so could force Catherine too to sell herself at the younger age. So when she grew up, went and studied hotel management, and that is when she started working, met this Spanish lady at work, took her to Spain. But all these things that Catherine said, they were only lies. This is so, so sad, guys. Very, very sad. Guys, no matter how much you are in love, never go against your family. As I'm talking right now, Catherine is so confused, is so sad of all that happened, but had to do it. Even they told her to cry so that they can believe all she's saying is true at the interview. So after doing the interview, everything went well and her passport was taken. And as I'm talking right now, Catherine does not have her passport. It is with those people that are preparing for her asylum. She received a call from the lawyer last time. Her asylum is out. She's going to get it 27th of January. So life continued after that visa interview and things continued to be very, very bad. They could treat her very badly. Something that shocked me even the more 
is that last summer guys this boyfriend left Catherine at home with the mother and went for vacation to Tanzania for one month can you imagine told her you do not work so there is no need for you to go for vacation vacation goes people who needs to relax their body after work Catherine was like, so if we get married, that means you'll be going on vacation alone. He said, yes, for me, every year I must go to a different country for one month vacation and no one is going to stop me. I will keep going alone. Who does that, guys, to a girlfriend? So after Diego returning on his vacation, kept on treating bad this girl, telling her she is useless, she doesn't have good education, doesn't speak Spanish, even the mother-in-law continued to call her useless, they told her to look for a job. But Catherine tells us she does not speak Spanish, so it was so difficult for her to find a job, but kept on looking for a job and eventually got a cleaning job at the restaurant and her job is to clean the dishes clean everywhere. Catherine works the whole night. She finishes every day at four in the morning and then return at home. But still it is not enough. She started this November and then the boyfriend is telling her the money you receive, you have to give me so that we can pay the bills. They take us, they know we are so ambitious. I talked about this to use us so Catherine should work and pay for this guy's bills. If you are not capable of taking care of me, why did you take me? Why did you bring me to your country? Because Catherine was working in Tanzania, had her own job. She was living nicely, not even this cleaning job that she is doing now. So they tell her she's stupid. Everything that she does is wrong. She doesn't have a say at all. The mother-in-law sends messages to the son, talking bad about her, saying that she doesn't like her at all because she refused to follow whatever the mother-in-law is asking her. So they fought and as I'm talking right now, Catherine does not talk to the mother-in-law. Another bad thing is that these people have isolated Catherine from everyone. Remember, the family doesn't know that Catherine has got a boyfriend. They know she's living with this Spanish mother, the Spanish mother that the family has tried so much to talk to but Catherine keeps on avoiding it and the family has gave up on asking to talk to that Spanish woman because Catherine's grandmother wanted to talk to her and thank her to bring Catherine to Europe oh my god if she could know what Catherine is going through it would be so so sad so they told her to delete Facebook delete Instagram and changed her phone numbers so that she cannot communicate to anyone. Deleted Facebook, deleted all her photos, but remained with Instagram. Was like, Instagram, I'm not going to delete, but doesn't post anything on Instagram. She is not supposed to be seen by anyone on social media. So due to all these that have happened, Catherine cries every day, doesn't have anyone to talk to because the family don't know what she is going through. She can't even talk to friends. The only person that Catherine talks to is me. So I'm doing all my best to advise this lady so that she can be strong and be able to fight the battle that she is fighting. Because guys, even if I blame her, judge her, it is not going to change anything at all. It is going to worsen the situation. So she told the boyfriend, you know the way things are going, no one in my family knows you. There is no love between us now. She says no kisses, no cuddles, no romantic dinners, nothing when they sleep they give each other back so she told him i want to return home let's end this the guy told her if you want to leave me if you want to return back home you need to pay all my money so he made a list of every single penny that he spent on Catherine, including the visa, the ticket the rent that he used to send the money when she was sick 
everything guys and told her when you pay this then you are free to go so Catherine was like I had to act like a strong woman and be like okay I am going to pay but I don't have that money at all and even if I want to go home now I don't have my passport with me how will I return home asked him how do you see us our relationship in 10 years to come the guy was like I don't know so this guy doesn't have even any plan of getting married to Catherine and I told Catherine even if he could tell you marry me do not marry this guy she was like no Bella I am done I can't take this anymore he is so immature he is a mama's boy no love treats me bad how can I get married to him? And even regrets of everything. Last time she talked to me, I got so emotional. She was like, Bella, my life is ruined. I have given up. I was like, you shouldn't talk like that. There is still hope. You can get out of that situation. You only need to be strong. So guys, Catherine wants to return back home. But the problem is when she returns back home, she will never be able to return to Europe. We'll have 10 years bad to enter Europe. And that really bothers her mind so, so much. So right now, as I am talking, the real, real situation, she is still thinking looking for a way to get out of that situation I am going to let you know if it is not in the video I am going to write to you on my community post here on YouTube and that will be January 27th when she gets her asylum because we want to read what is written on her passport so that we know the way out I know some of you are like Bella why can't she call Tanzanian embassy and return home she can't do that guys because at the time you ask for an asylum that means you don't trust your government you don't trust the system so she's still going on with her work waiting for that January 27th so dear friends just like i promised you i'm going to be sharing with you the name of the dating app where Catherine met diego it was tinder i hope you all have heard it and guys these people they dated for only four months because the relationship started june 2021 and then november Catherine was in spain already started living with diego that was a very short period of time to know a guy and start living together so we learned something here guys never be in a hurry even if a guy threatens to leave you let him leave you i am very sure if he loves you he's gonna respect you he's gonna let you take your time if he refuses that's a good reason for you to leave him so guys i have lots of things to advise you concerning this story but as you have listened to this story attentively i am very very sure you have learned something so let us end it here thank you so much for watching till now god bless you so so much Please give this video a thumbs up. If you have liked it, share it with your friends, family, everyone that you think will enjoy this video and learn something. Watch my other videos too. They are super good. Comment below what you think about this story. Until next time, guys, I love you so much. You're always here in my heart. Guys, shine your eyes. <laughs>